Hey guys and welcome to my first uh, drawing tutorial. This is going to be the first part of a part five and I want you guys to learn how to create a freehand uh, piece for a forearm. So we're going to start out with like the really basic principles I use, what different uh, tools I like to use for my drawing and um, yeah let's get started the first thing i want to show you guys is these paper mushy things that nobody knows what, what it's called but this is what i would use for like doing all the the basic sketching uh, what i do is i have like a separate paper on the side where i mush uh, some of the pencil so i can collect it with the brush and it gives me the, like a free space to uh, create the basic movements of the drawing i'm creating so we're gonna do that in a minute so it's for you gotta pick this up if you don't already own it. The second thing is these Palomino pencils I've been using that I'm really, really happy about. They come in two different variations, but this I would say is like a, the more of the grayish tone. It won't come out like super black when you do like your dark areas, where this would really come in and do like that, that extra pop to your, uh, to your drawing. The cool thing is you're able to switch out uh, the erasers on the back because they're pretty expensive pencils so it's cool you have a nice little feature like this uh, and with all packages you can um, you can buy extras of everything um, if you need uh, a link for them or anything uh, send me a dm after after this clip and i'll send any info to you that you need uh, i bought them of a, a, an art supplier in the states that I was really happy about. If you're not fortunate enough to find it in your uh, art supplier, it is possible to buy them online on Amazon or th on their own uh, homepage. So for the next thing is this electrical eraser that I really like to do to define all my details. And I would highly recommend you to pick one of these up as well. Again, I use, I'm starting to use a smaller one of these paper thingies. Normally I would only use this one, but this, I'm again, I'm trying to develop as well as an artist. So for me, this to see if I can get some more refined details in, in my drawings. Uh, and a pencil sharpener and a glass for the for these things. Um, this is also uh, what I use for an eraser. It's, it is some kind of goo and you can, again, you can pick it up in any art supplier you may, may collect in and they work really well as well uh, they pick up, up a lot of dirt along the way i like to use them for charcoal and up but i found out that i really like it to um to this kind of uh, pencil drawings as well because you're able to kind of collect the the lead without mushing the paper too much so you can just dab it and it will collect a small amount of it which i really like okay guys uh, so for starters I think it's really good to have like a, you need to have like a plan before you start. So the first part is that we want to create a piece for the forearm. So I'm going to sketch out a forearm, very basically. I would always do this so I'm really prepared. Not for my clients, I like to, to freehand everything on the day when my client come in to see whatever he's into. Is it bio-organic? Is it, is it a skull? Do he want a demon? Do he have a picture on Instagram of something I've done he liked? But whatever. So for this will be the wrist down here. Up here will be the ditch. And I'll always like to create something that, that can go up on the bicep as well. So I kind of get like the whole surface uh, of the forearm grounded. But for this, I'm gonna see if I can create something maybe like a demonic shape. So start out with like a, like a, a separate the forearm down the middle. Find like the center. I always want to use like the really fatty part of the arm, which would be the other uh, part of the forearm. And I'm not too afraid to go be, uh, behind the sides of the forearm because 
I, I, if this was a real tattoo, I would still do that. So it kind of would end out here and it, I'll just have to do like a small filler or whatever on, uh, on the outer side to really create that uh, cool and um, um, dynamic piece. So you got your, your basic shape, you got the cross going down the middle for, for the measurement for your eyes. Small nose shape. I'm beginning to do more like the basic shading first because I feel that's what comes closest to when I uh, when I draw on a client with the the yellow, orange, and the red markers. So in my head, I'm imagining this to be like the yellow marker. So right now I'm just mushing in like yellowish color on the skin to to create that. that um, idea of a face or demon or whatever I'd, I'd like to do for my client that day. And then with the other pencil, I'll start refining the details a lot more. So I have the eyes, I have the, the nostrils going down. I want, want it to look like he's really, he's really grumpy. He's have that kind of looking down look, like looking down on all of us, judging us. Let's see. And I like to mush out the sides to create that, that like that overshaded look. So imagine this would be the skin and this would be like a middle tone. You simply just gray out on your client afterwards. Um, I'm going to go over the basic of how I think with like uh, detail points and non detail points and contrast points and high contrast points. It's, it, in the end of the day, it's super simple the way I work uh, once you get it. Uh, but I use a lot of different terms like uh, detail points and non detail points and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but that's what I feel makes my work stand out a bit. So we got the forehead, we got the eyebrow, we got the eyes, the nose, the cheeks. Now it's the time to create like the mouth. And again, I'll, if this were a yellow marker, I'll just do some scribbly lines to, to see, uh, see where I could maybe fit in the teeth or the lips or whatever I like to do. Pretty basic. Motion out the sides a bit so I see what's in focus and what not in focus. I like it so far. So now to create the, the under jaw. You can see I have like that sharpened look, kind of like a triangular look from the teeth, the nose, the eyebrows. So I want to continue developing that down in the, the under jaw. Sketch out a few sharp teeth here, maybe a little bigger one in the middle. And then I mush out the sides a bit. So I know now that I want this in focus, or the nose in focus, the eyes, and the middle of the forehead. Anything else really doesn't matter to me at this point. <laughs> Cut the chin. And so we have created like a real basic shape of a, dem uh, of a demon. Uh, what I like to do is that this is what I would call like the, the foreground. This is what you will see uh, at, at first. But I would like to have like another layer coming over it, which would ever be like ripped skin I do. Uh, some bioorganic movement, uh, a hand, whatever you feel like doing that day. Um, and all the mushy parts here is what I call, it, it is not the background, but it is, for this piece, I would refer to it as the background because I try to push that behind the focus point to, to make that face like grow out of the paper kind of. 
but let's see here what we can do. So if this would be the risk, you have always have like the um, the blood vessels, the I don't know the English term for this, but you know you have your strings going up. So maybe if I start doing just let's shape, maybe a bony shape, and see what that would look like. Maybe I get some some stuff like a rib cage or something coming up here at the side. So whatever. And we haven't really figured out what we want to do with the forehead, but for now I'm thinking I will keep it pretty simple. Maybe have some some flow coming down towards it. Uh, to open up to so I could maybe create a new piece up here on the bicep itself but uh, for now we're just gonna leave it until we know further what we want to do so this would be like my yellowish marker drawing if this was a forearm and now I would go in with my orange pencil and start to refine the details a bit more I'm still keeping it super loose at this point because I don't really know uh, if this is something my client is gonna like, or if it's a design, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep. So first of all, I always start like with the left eye, or just whatever comes more natural to me. Uh, create like the ball shape of the eye, which I already did, and then I just go in and refine uh, the eyelids, the eyeball, and the eyebrow in, in a, either a very light tone or a mid tone but I try to again keep it very loose at this point I'm only sketching I'm just trying to get a good plan for my client and for myself um, when I do it like this I'm, I'm thinking um, I'm really into like having a good plan before you start the tattoo so you don't need to think as much when, when you're doing your tattoo for your client uh, not that it really matter, but that's just how I like to work. I like to work and being able to, like the plan is already set and now I'm just filling in the shapes and shadows. So for me, the first part of, uh, when you when you book an appointment with me, I will sit there and draw on you for like 45 minutes or an hour. Uh, and my, um, Sessions are only six hours, but because I make sure to do such a detailed freehand drawing before I start the tattoo itself, it makes me work really, really fast because I don't need to stop up and be like, ah, oh, um, how is how is it again? I want this shaped or shaded or whatever. No, I just jump right into it and just start filling out the basic shapes and stuff. And I've been doing that for about a year that way and it's been working out very well every time um, I'm gonna do that technique again when I start tattooing uh, in August now I'm just creating like the mid tone for the cheek trying to get that nose really sharp and Rumbly, get the nostril in, get all the like the ana uh, anatomy right. I'm not trying to make this uh, drawing oral, if it were to super symmetrical because I really feel like with freehand it's cool if if it has some different features on both both sides even though it's a it's a demonic face from from like a front view I still prefer to to maybe change it up or smash out one of the eyes and stuff um, which I could, could think about doing on this one as well. Uh, another thing is, it's super important for you guys to pick up some good quality drawing paper. 
some smooth one that isn't too grindy because the, the grindier it is, it will pick up even more lead from the pencils and it will make it harder for you to draw if your hand starts sweating up a bit uh, and it will collect too much of the lead and make it super difficult for you to erase and you get super frustrated by it. I know that from experience. When I, if I would do this with my uh, with my marker drawings on my client, I would use the orange pen. I would call this the orange one, and then I would go in with the yellow again because the alcohol in it would mush up the orange, so I get that more like soft look to create that illusion of the the basic shadings before I go in and refine it. So we are still at the the sketching phase here. Nothing is completed. Nothing is determined or whatever, it's just having fun with it and see where it goes. Mushing out the side a bit. Okay, okay, okay. And I'm coming to terms that I, I'm, I'm happy enough with this side, I like it. So now I want to create that those wrinkles around the mouth to make it look like it's growling or get roaring or getting mad or whatever. You don't need to do as I do. I like to start it with a bit of texture to create like the different loops uh, of the lips. If you don't like doing lips on your, on your demons, you don't have to. I just like it, at least out in the sides to really get the muscle tissue going on them, I, th I think. and. When I come through here, either I erase it a bit to, to maybe see if I can just do the teeth directly on the gums uh, without having uh, any lips. Maybe I just have one of the teeth going over under the lip here. Again, keep in mind that, well, I'm always struggling to, to figure out how I want the teeth and the nostril area because I don't want them to like hit each other or get into, I would call it, I call it a fight. Uh, because if you mush all, all of your effects and stuff together, you end up with like a really cr uh, like all smashed drawing or tattoo where you're thinking a lot about like how much stuff can you put into like one tattoo, which for me, it's not the case. Like I find uh, figure out that with my style, or at least the way I work, that less is more. And if I can just bang out a full face on like a forearm, even like half the bicep, you know, it's going to look so more aggressive and dynamic. Um, and you can push so much more detail into it than you could if you did like two faces on a, on a forearm or like small skulls and stuff. And it, it, it is just a matter of, I, I would say either work ethics, laziness, or your like, how you feel it would look like artistically. Um, for me, I prefer to work a bit fast. I like the idea that going, when I go home every day that I've created something new and there's a new tattoo walking around out there on my clients and because most of my clients fly in from uh, either different parts of Europe or the US or basically anywhere uh, it's super important for me to, to send them home with a finished product um, deter all determined on what they have booked, of course. If they have booked a full back piece, you will not get a full back piece in one day. So don't even don't don't even ask me if you can get a back piece in one day. You put because you can't. It's gonna take one and a half day. Nah, just kidding. It's gonna take a bit longer. Okay. So some 
how this kit is detailed, some of it is not so detailed, but I'm beginning to like what I see here. So now I have to focus on the other side and I think for, for the purpose of the, the tutorial, I'll do it more or less a symmetrical, um, symmetrical eye. So I'll try to copy the other side. I want like the, the fatty part of the eyebrow going over the eye here, creating that growliness, as I call it. The eyelids. And then you have like the fatty tissue from the eyebrows coming out the sides. Again here, I do it with textures, not, not because I like to do it, but it's easier for my brain to comprehend than, than not doing it. If you go along the way and you're unsure if you have your measurements right, does it look symmetrical or not, uh, you can always take your marker or pencil, measure out a bit, and you can see I'm a bit off here, but for me, again, I think it's, it's charming. I don't really care. You see that the one of the nostrils is, is a big bit higher than the other. But again, guys, it really depends on what you're trying to get out of your uh, your design or what your clients prefer, whatever you prefer as well. Uh, for me, I like them to look very natural and I know for a fact that everything real in life, that isn't uh, straight, so I don't really care if, if, if my stuff is, is a bit crooked. I think it's it gives uh, that my monsters a bit more charm and, and life, kind of say. Trying to, and because again, this is just a sketching phase. So now I'm maybe seeing if I can do the eyelid in a, like in a softer way, maybe I can soften it out in the cheek rather than here where it has a very hard line. So this gives me like a, a chance to, to see it before I would start doing it as a tattoo. Uh, so that's what you can really benefit for when, you, when you're doing your clients. And before, if you have doubts with anything, um, freestyle some different stuff uh, on him, he, he wouldn't know. Uh, and you just do whatever you feel like would be the best plan for, for your design. I think for this side, I'm gonna do it with like either the smooth eyelid here, but I could also think, uh, think about maybe doing like a hard eyelid over here to get like more like a bony texturing shape. And again, because I don't want it to be super symmetrical, it would create like the illusion that it was all planned. And again, it's, too, it's a bit faster and easier way to work when you tattoo it, because you're not trying to copy the other side, you're not trying to create a symmetrical look, you're just giving that tattoo its life on its own and I, I really like working that way. Okay, we got the, the eyes down, we got the nose down, we got the first row of the teeth done. I like it so far, so now we're gonna continue down doing the, the under jaw or at least the bottom teeth. See if we can get something cool going here. Again, keep in mind that you want to kind of hide the, the teeth behind the other teeth to create that, that kind of bubble look. So the face is going to look round and it's going to help a lot when it comes to, let's say a forearm because the forearm is round. So if you've already uh, tried to boost its natural and non uh, autonomy, it's going to look really, really 3D when it uh, goes from um, from uh, sketch to finish the two, and it's gonna help a lot on your pictures as well. So I would overshade these teeth a bit just to exaggerate 
the fact that they are behind each other, but it's also an easy way for my brain to, to work. Cool. Okay, now we have to create like the, the under jar. We have the, the row of the teeth are really going behind each other. But I only want like the center here to be in focus, like the chin area. So I think I will start here with the bottom to create the basic shape of it. Again, guys, it's not super important. Like the important stuff is already over. Now it's just like filling in uh, all the other stuff. But keep in mind that this is hopefully gonna be on somebody permanently. You don't want your work to get lasered off or whatever. But um, there's some, I see guys when they do either freehand or whatever they do, because it's pretty normal to start from the bottom when you tattoo, that you will use up like ton, ton, tons of your focus on just doing like an under jar that nobody really cares about. And then when you go to get to the eyes, that is super important. Like you've lost all your focus for the day. So keep that in mind when you start doing your tattoo, that if you're like me, like I have, like, uh, I would say I have, have a maximum, max, max, maximum of six hours of uh, uh, concentration on a normal day session, where if it were a convention, I can just push myself and just get it done as good and fast as possible without really thinking about it. But for like a client, I would still say that I would focus on this and have fun with the rest of the stuff because this is what it's gonna take long. The chin shouldn't take long. It's not supposed to shit take long. But uh, as you can see, I've decided to like mush it out again. Get some basic, basic detail in the chin area. Giving the illusion of the jawbone, more or less. I'm starting to do. No, I wouldn't say call it texture, but as I'm sketching the texture to to figure out like an idea of it. I am also gonna do a bunch of flow in this one because I really it's a super cool way to uh, to give your uh, drawing a bunch of life, but it's also a super good way to make the boring parts of the drawing stand out really uh, really much or a lot and it looks super good uh, on on an arm because it's on a, a live person so you want to create something that looks like it's moving it's it's alive it's part of the body a uh, body's an uh, anatomy Okay, I, I really like how it looks at the at the moment. Uh, what I would do is maybe to get some 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 flow lines going up here, get them crooked. But normally I would draw that on. If it, this were a real tattoo, I would draw it on now and quickly maybe bloodline it or just give it a light shading to create it. But because this is a drawing, I like to do it with with the eraser. And I would prefer to do it in the end, but I'm just going to show you the technique. So you will take like a soft eraser and that's where this comes in because again, it's like sketching, but with an eraser because it's so soft. So I try to, first of all, I'm trying to figure out what would look cool for this. To get, get that those basic shapes going.
Shaving that. I had the, you can call it rib skin, smoke, uh, wannabe Victor Portugal, wannabe just off it, whatever you like to call it, I'm down for that. Uh, because in the end of the day, that, that is what it is for me. Uh, I'm super inspired by some of the those guys and not so much, that I don't really try to copy them, but I'm really trying to get into the same um, idea of flow as those guys uh, possess. Okay guys, we are like around half an hour in and this is what would be the basic outcome of the, the um, what I like to call it is maybe the, the main focus of the tattoo, but we still have all this other stuff to do. Um, so if you're like me uh, and you need like focus points or like you, 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 your brain can't comprehend so much at the time, I would prefer that you start with the main um, object, finish that before you go, go in and, and do the other stuff. But again, this is a hopefully going to be a five hour tutorial. So I don't mind starting doing like the, the biggest sketch now. So we have this whole um, forehead area, which is super loose. There's nothing there yet. Um, so for me, it's either trying to stack another head on it, maybe put an eye on it, uh, a symbol, whatever it's, uh, or create a bunch of flow down in it. It really depends on either what you prefer or what the clients prefer. Um, I like to, again, do like the roundish shape. So I know what I'm working out of. And, hmm. I really like the shape of it, but I don't, I really, really like, I really dig this head. So I don't think I'm gonna try to push myself and, and, and do like maybe a, a stack of hits. I don't think, think I would like that. Um, so this is where your artistic freedom comes comes in. This is where you can just create like shapes and shadows with your markers. That's what I do. I see like the flow line going here. Ah, maybe I can turn that into something. Focusing a bit more on the eyebrows, maybe create, get them created into some kind of horns or something. Could be pretty cool. And here I get more like a teeth texture, like the horns are turning into something. Still have that roundy shape that I really, really dig. Okay, let's see here. So I see a new row of horns, I think. It's kind of like a crown of horns. And again, don't pressure yourself by trying to do it super symmetrical, but it is, it is gonna annoy you when you start doing this too. Of course, like the, the basic size of the horn could be the same, which I would prefer uh, because it looks super cool. But I don't really care that this horn is a bit smaller than that, or I'm gonna do like a, like a small mini third one coming out of here. I think I'm gonna see if I can like open up the forehead here.
and don't be afraid of like mushu drawing drawing along the way. Just get this the 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 idea of the shape before you 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 do anything, and don't be afraid of erasing a bunch of stuff. Like again, before you start your tattoo, have a good plan. It's super important. Like you, if you if you have a three hour session, do two hours of just simply drawing on your client. Like he, they don't. In the end of the day, when when they go home, they just want. A super cool piece from you. They you'll, they don't care how you got there as long as you get there. So I see like a round object in here, which could either be the brain on orb on eye. Um, I'm getting a bit tired of eyes, not because I don't like to do them, but more or less because it's been done so much and so many guys can do it better than me. I still work on it a lot and try to develop it, which I would always recommend everybody to do. But I always feel like it's been seen a bunch of times before, but it's been a while since I've seen a demon with an open brain, so I think I would prefer to maybe see if I can do like the the meaty textures of a brain, which would also be like, that, this would be new for me as well. And if I don't like it, fuck it, I'm just gonna raise it and start over. I don't care. I ain't. I ain't scared. Yeah. If you have any quick questions for me after this uh, video or tutorial, feel free to DM me. Take screenshots of the um, uh, of the clip or send the clip to me, and yeah, ask me whatever because I'm. I just really would like to learn you guys as much as possible in the time we have. Um, of course, there's, there's gonna be a bunch of qu questions I'm not able to answer for you guys because that's gonna be in the, the next videos. Uh, so keep clear for that. Um, Okay guys, I really like how this is coming out. So yeah, at some point I'm gonna turn this into a brain. This is just gonna be like mu mushy muscle tissue in the background. Again, I don't really care so much about what's going on out here because if this were asleep, I would be able to do something on the, uh, on the other side of the arm. And um, I'll just have like this mushy background I have to work myself into which I wouldn't mind at all. Here we go. Yeah, I really like how this turned out. Again, just because we're trying to do it as a tattoo. Get the idea of the, the flow in it.
Cool. So we have our center point. We have a bit of another center point, I would say, but it's again, it's not the main focus, but it's still gonna be in the focus with all these cool horns going up. And now we're gonna create whatever we want to have in the bottom of the of the wrist. So for me, I really see like the organic shape. Like I feel like this is kind of like an alien demon. Um, I want the chin really to pop out here in the bottom. So whatever I do down here, it's not gonna be like the main focus. So I wanted to to really show that it's going behind the the chin area. And I feel like I see like a basic organic rib cage here. So I'm gonna work with that. Make sure that your organic stuff doesn't gonna look like a sack of balls because you will never hear the end of it from your clients if they feel like they have a pair of balls on their wrist. So don't do that. It's a rookie mistake. I've done it so many times. Yeah, so I really like how this turned out to be like a more bio-organic ribcage kind of thingy that I really think is gonna, it's gonna help this piece a lot. start to refine some details so I have like an understanding where the shapes are going gonna create the, the last part of the flow here really like that so this is when hopefully when it's done I would be able to either do a print of it or sell it to a client as an idea for a tattoo or just as I like to do, just keep it. It's hopefully going to be a cool, cool drawing and yeah, that's really it. But 
this is like the base. This is what is what I would say. It's really good to work out from. You have all your basic shading down. You have your main focus and your separate focus points. You've got some bl blurry stuff going on, and you know you're pretty much good to go. Like you have a good idea at this point is what is the hell is going to go on with this uh, either drawing or tattoo. Uh, for the next part here is what I would call the the tattoo part, and what I do. Because it's a piece of paper, it's gonna get mushy from your hand. So I take another piece of paper, and it's also, I've also figured out that it's a super good way for me to work, that I kind of hide the rest of the drawing for me, and I'm just doing my focus, not my focus points, but again, if I'm looking at this, like this is a really big drawing, this is A3 paper, so if I have to finish this in one go, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get super tired of it, I'm gonna get exhausted, like I'm gonna lack so much focus. But if I just separate the drawing into different tasks that I can just finish before I go further. So for example, the rib cage, I would just say, oh, I'm just gonna finish the rib cage completely before I move to the under jar. I mean, I've done the under jar, I'm gonna do the upper, uh, upper jar and the one side, the different side and the brain. That way it works really, really good for me because I, I treat my freehand drawings kind of like a portrait. When I, if I was doing this, I would start maybe like sketching, kind of bloodlining everything, not super hard, but like shaping, blah, 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 jumping a bit around till I had like a, a, a good part of the drawing done. I would finish that, do that again and, and jump around a bit. Uh, we still have some time left here for this first part of the seminar. So I'm gonna jump in where I feel I'm I'm warm now. I want to I want to do something. So I've been looking looking at this eye for the whole video. So I'm gonna start doing that first. As you can see, I try to hide the other stuff. Also, not to get the paper dirty. And I do it with like my medium Palomino pencil. I'm, I'm waiting to, to use the black one till the end, so I can really push the black in. As you can see, it's still super, this is super dark. I'm not saying this is a bad pencil. I'm just saying the other one, wait and see, is, is just that 10% better. But for like the grayish detail, it's not as good as this one.
I'm still a bit sketchy at this point, just to refine the details, get the idea of the texture, shape of the eyeball, all that kind of stuff. I like to mush my details along the way and then when I feel that it's about to be finished I like to go in and refine it a bit more. And you see this is where these paper pencils comes really in handy because they're able to do it just a little bit more soft and gray than a regular pencil would. And I'm really able to saturate the paper as much as possible because then the areas I would leave open for, for the paper, paper is going to look kind of like white highlights, which I really like. And what I feel it's going to help you develop as a tattoo artist if you treat your drawing kind of as a tattoo. So you already have a good plan, a good idea of what the hell is going on. Because at the end of the day, I, I really feel that that's the thing. Like sometimes you, you end up doing such a cool freehand sketch for your client. And then all of a sudden you're halfway through the tattoo. And it's just like you're losing all track of, of the plan. And that's why if, you, if you've if you created like super good base for your drawing, it's, it's not really that difficult. Just sit here now. For me, this is just the fun part. Just sitting here creating shapes and shadow and texture all day long. You see, I tried to do my textures super soft first, and then I refined it with the pencil afterwards. You can, you can already see like how the, the eyebrow is getting pushed back into the skull of it. The, the, eye, the upper eyebrow is, is kind of um, going over the ball shape of the eye. You have you, the, again the eyebrow going all over the eyeball to, to create that depth. The soft, uh, the soft um, eyelid, the soft eyelid under the eye, 
and then you have uh, the cheek going here going down to that rumpling nostril so you know it's super it's a, a lot about like refining the muscle tissues in your in your drawing in your designs getting that idea of what's going on here i don't want this to look like a person when it's done but i want it to have like the, the same idea of muscle as a human face would because that's the only reference i have in my head is like a human uh, because demons doesn't exist in real life no matter what your mom tells you that's just how it is god is fake the end of story I like to do my textures super bubbly, or bumpy, or whatever you like to call it. Uh, and I would either do that with the pencils, or the paper pencil, and then refine it afterwards. And when you do this and you really get into like drawing a lot, you can see that all the technique, techniques you could use in your tattoos. So like, I treat this as what it is, it's like a fucking soft mag. And I just do it to like do that mid-tone saturation before I will start doing my darker texture underneath it. And in the end of the day, the faster and better you are drawing, the faster and better you can do your tattoos. Now for the dark parts.
And for me, this is also a super good way to learn how to do new textures for my clients and for my overall tattoos and designs. So be aware of that if you feel like your drawing isn't coming out the way you would, you should still be happy about it that you at least you learned something new that day. You learned not learn about what not to do. See how that looks. I like it so far. 